Hey, welcome to Brightworks. What are we working on today? 1977 911 Turbo, different motor, different lots of things. But it is amazing <clears throat> the things that you forget over time and then you need your memory jogged. So one of the things that uh, I've been trying to sort out, you see this hose here? This hose is going to the um, uh, mechanical boost gauge. And you can see how it's been cut. There's splits in it. And I was thinking to myself, well, oh, man, having to replace all that. Going to be a gigantic pain in the butt. Um, has to be a simpler way. And then I had an epiphany. I said, wait a minute. I did this 10 years ago in my own car. So this is your stock standard brake booster valve. And you'll notice that it's got one attachment for a vacuum hose and then it goes into the brake booster. All right, this is your little check valve. This one is also a check valve, but it has an unmetered air, you know, non-checked, if you will, uh, nipple on the back of it. So this is actually, I believe, from a 944 Turbo, if, uh, if I remember correctly. But this is where you can get your boost signal for your mechanical boost gauge. So your mechanical boost gauge is right behind there, right? Not very far away. It's actually maybe 18 inches of hose, if that much, maybe 12 inches. So instead of this giant run of hose that goes all the way to the back, it's in the engine compartment, it's all crispy and cruddy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this valve out right here. And as a matter of fact, when I was doing that, I noticed there's a split in that vacuum hose. So we're gonna change that vacuum hose too. Should make the brakes work better. But this will be a much more elegant solution. So follow along as we uh, get this mechanical boost gauge working with a little bit less complexity um, and certainly gonna be much easier to service in the future. So we're gonna get some stuff apart and, uh, and we'll show you what's up. All right, so over the years, you've had different options on the boost gauges, basically two, and they're always made by VDL. So when you pull this guy out, I have no idea what all of this orange wiring is, but when you pull this guy out, right there is that little line, right, for the mechanical boost gauge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that guy off. We're gonna figure out why this ground wire is not attached to anything because there should have been a ground from the clock that used to be in here. And hopefully that'll actually make that light work. But none of that stuff matters because again, mechanical boost gauge, right? So all you really need to do is put some air pressure on it. So we're gonna get this apart and uh, fish out this, uh, this line and see if we can, yeah, I think if you look through there, you can actually see the frunk. Yeah, you guys having a tough little view of it. But um, we're going to take that line from this boost gauge, basically from right here in the dashboard to where you saw the uh, uh, brake booster. So we're going to get on with it. All right, we got enough stuff to do a proof of concept. So ideally, I would have another couple feet of this. This is three and a half millimeter uh, tubing. I have plenty of four and a half, so that'll be a little, we'll do a proof of concept, make sure that it works. The way that this valve works is this is the side that's coming from the engine all the way through the car. And when you have positive boost pressure, it'll go out this side, but not this side. This is a check valve. When, it's, when the engine's making vacuum, it'll allow, this check valve will allow the brake booster to, uh, to see the vacuum, but not the, uh, not the pressure side. So we're gonna give this a shot, make sure that we have enough air volume and everything to, to actually make this ancient mechanical gauge work. And uh, if all that works, then we'll go ahead and get the right size hose and the right clamps. So give me a minute, I'll go off and get some stuff installed and then we'll go for a test drive. I got the original check valve out of the car, which sounds easy when you say it fast. Um, but one of the things that I noticed, look at the dry rot, the bulging, and the crack starting. So we're definitely going to do this as a proof of concept. We're going to replace that hose. Um, that is a Porsche only part, folks. 
you probably could loop something up, but they do consider it a molded hose. So we're gonna go get this in there. And you know, if this fails or if the one under the pedal box fails, um, the car will still stop. You are just gonna have to treat it like it's a pre-76 car and you're gonna use a lot of foot pressure. So I'm not worried about that for you know, a short little test drive to prove this guy works. But yeah, definitely, you know, all of these old hoses, you know, we're getting to a point where the whole damn car needs to be replaced. No, I didn't say that. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right, we're going to go put this on. All right, we got a little temperature in her. Let's see. actually go back and look at the video you guys know better than me what that boosted to but the spring she has in her is a 0.9 so we'll have to go check that I tried to calibrate the gauge before I put it in but who knows maybe we uh, maybe we blew off one of those little hoses but anyway that shows proof of concept I think we're good there not sure uh, how well these uh, gauges deal with vacuum but the modern stuff, you know, show you your vacuum, engine health. But yeah, pretty happy that that worked. All right, once we get it all sorted out, we'll probably post another couple fun drive videos. Thanks for watching. Have, have a great day. Check us out at brightworks.com. Happy Halloween.